Hey guys, Akil Mohideen here. So today I decided we should take a look at some analog circuits. So I decided today that we'll start with the op amp. Now before we start talking about what an op amp actually is, I figured we should talk about what amplification is before we start. Now amplification is just when you change the amplitude of some wave. So you can see here on the left we have the um, sum wave, and then on the right we have an amplified version of that wave. And all that means is that every single point along the first wave, the primary wave, is multiplied by some factor a to give us the second wave. And if the value a is above 1, then you'll get a curve outside on um, the amplified version that's bigger. Now you could also have a reduction where gain is less than 1 and you get a smaller version of the same curve. But that's all amplification is. And to get the amplification factor, all you need to do is divide v1, which is the amplitude of the amplified curve, by v0, which is the amplitude of the unamplified curve, or the source curve. And that'll give you your gain factor a. Now, it's important to understand that with an op amp or any sort of amplifier, you're not just creating power out of nowhere. You're actually just taking a secondary source of power, something like a battery, and merely applying the electron flow from the battery to this curve that you're trying to make. So let's say you have this curve here with a maximum peak of 1 volt. And you try and amplify this curve to, say, with a gain of 3 volts, which means the peak should now be at 3 volts, but yet your power supply is only 1 volt. Well, it won't matter. Your peak will never go above 1 volt because this is why I'm talking about that you just don't create power with an amplifier. Merely, it's completely dependent on what your power supply is. So if you only have a power supply that can handle 1 volt, then you're only ever going to reach a maximum of 1 volt. So you can see here on the right that this blue curve is representing what the amplifier is trying to do, where it's trying to amplify the peak all the way up to 3 volts, and that uh, 0 0.5 volt point that we drew before is trying to amplify that to 1.5 volt. But this black line represents what you'll actually see if you try and measure this with an oscilloscope because all you're, all you're going to see is that it's sort of going to plateau at 1 volt because that's all your power supply can effectively muster. This means that your curve is essentially ruined. So it's important to make sure that you have a power supply that can handle the gain that you're trying to put into your amplifier. So now let's talk about the circuit diagram for an amplifier. And what you're going to have for the circuit diagram is you're basically going to have a triangle. And on the left side of the triangle is going to be your V in input. And that's basically the signal that you're trying to amplify. That's the input. And then on the right side of the triangle, you're going to have your output. And that's the now amplified version of that signal. Now, of course, like we talked about, you're going to need a power supply, a plus and a minus supply. The plus supply is going to be for amplifying the things that are above the x-axis. And the minus supply is going to be for amplifying the things below the x-axis. Right? That makes sense. So your plus supply is going to be here, and your minus supply is going to be denoted below the triangle. Now the sign for an op amp is basically the same as the old amplifier sign, except that you can tell that V in has been split up into these two different voltage potentials called VP, or the non-inverting input, and VN, V negative, or the inverting input. Now the thing about this is that voltage is always a difference between two potentials. So when you had this single line for V in as we did in the old amplifier, merely what you're just looking at is how does that voltage in V in compare to ground? But here what we're doing is we're saying, how does the voltage in VP compare to the voltage in VN? Now it's the same thing, we're just defining V in as the difference between VP and VN. V in. Okay, now there's a few rules for op amps that we need to sort of learn. Okay, the first is that V out or VO um, over V in is equal to infinity. Now this is the same thing as saying V in is equal to zero. Now what does that mean? That means if V in is defined as VP minus V in. So if zero is equal to VP minus V in, then uh, VP is supposed to be equal to V n. Now that means that it's trying, the op amp is always trying to keep VP and VN equal to each other. So these two inputs, the non-inverting input and the inverting input, are always meant to be around the same value. That's the job of the op amp, to try and keep them around the same value. Now the second rule for an op amp is that RN is equal to infinity. Now there's this resistor between VP and VN, and that's supposed to be equal to infinity. Now the easiest way to make an infinite resistor is obviously an open circuit. So another way of defining this is that no current flows into VP or flows out of VP, and no current flows into VN or out of VN. And this is really special because we want to make sure we get this down, that no current actually flows into the op amp. That's a really important fact, that no current is ever supposed to flow into the op amp. Now this second rule, the Rn is equal to infinity, or no current rule, is also called the infinite impedance rule. Now, what they mean by that is that these are rules for the ideal op amp. These are the qualities that an ideal op amp would have.
They're not necessarily rules, but the op amps that are manufactured today are tried to be as close to the ideal op amp as possible. This way they follow the formulas that we're about to prove in a little bit just as closely as they can. So if we take a look at the circuit, we can try and create a relationship between V O or V out and the input signal that we have here. So first off, taking a look at it, there's a few things that we know. A, we know that there's some current I flowing across resistor S. Now we know that there's no current flowing into V in or the inverting input of our op amp because that was in our ideal op amp rules. We know that I is going to be equal across RS and across RF. Now using Ohm's law, we know that V equals IR, which is the same thing as saying I equals V over R. Now in this case, V, the voltage, is going to be equal to the voltage on the left side of the resistor minus the voltage on the right side of the resistor. Now knowing this, we can define I in two different ways. But before we do this, let's label a little bit more things on our op amp. Well, first off, we know that VS, let's label VS, that's our input signal. And let's label VN, that's our inverting uh, input on our op amp. Let's also label VP. Now VP is grounded, so we know VP is equal to zero. So now back to defining I. So I is equal to V over R, where V is equal to the voltage on the left side of the resistor minus the voltage on the right side of the resistor. So the voltage on the left side of the resistor is equal to Vs, and the voltage on the right side of the resistor is going to be equal to Vn, which is equal to zero because it's equal to Vp, which is equal to zero, and that's in our ideal op amp rules. So based off this, we know that I is equal to Vs over Rs. Now remember that I flowing across RS is going to be I flowing across RF. So this time we can define I in terms of RF. So on the left side of RF, you have the voltage potential VN. And on the right side of RF, you have the voltage potential VO or V out. So that means you have VN minus V out all over RF, except VN is zero like we defined earlier. So now you have negative V out over RF is equal to I. Now we can set both equations equal to each other. So now we get Vs over Rs is equal to negative V out over Rf. So now by multiplying by negative Rf and dividing by Vs, we can finally find the relationship between V out and our input signal. Now this means that V out over Vs, or the relationship between V out and Vs, or you could also call this the gain, is equal to negative Rf over Rs. So this means that we can change the gain of an amplifier merely by changing two resistors. We could make it 10 or 2 or 100 just by changing two resistor values. And that's what makes the op amp so ideal. Now what does this negative side mean? Well, the negative sign responds to a phase shift. So that means if it was 1 volt before and you have a gain of 3, it's going to end up being negative 3 volts. So guys, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this video. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. Other than that, I will catch you guys later.